Bureau. Is this legal? You're, you're shaking your head no. Rick Salinger had no trouble at all. The massive I-70 project will bring the highway closer to homes. So, CDOT is offering millions of dollars for remodeling. And we're covering Colorado Springs, Castle Rock, and the Booter Canyon. The big story in Colorado is an all-night protest inside the Denver office of U.S. Senator Cory Gardner. This group has been there since this morning, letting the senator know they are strongly opposed to the Republican health care plan, specifically those proposed changes to Medicaid. Now that change could impact 1.4 million people here in our state. Karen Morfitt is at Gardner's office tonight. Karen, they are not planning to leave anytime soon. No, Karen, they tell me they'll leave or they'll stay here until one of two things happens. Either they get arrested or Senator Cory Gardner agrees to vote against the Republican health care bill, a bill that he helped draft. From sunup to sundown, disability rights activists have spent their day both inside. My question to Senator Gardner is what? Did you sell us out for? And outside of Senator Cory Gardner's office, Ed Sandoval is a member of ADAPT, an organization dedicated to fighting for the rights of people with disabilities. So they're lying on the floor, staging a diet, making a statement that this is what's going to happen to a lot of us if they pass this bill. Despite the threat of arrest, activists remained. Their concern is Medicaid and proposed cuts to federal funding. Jose Torres Vega worries about the impact cuts will have on his quality of life. Should this bill pass, I think that we all will lose services. We all will lose the ability to have our wheelchairs repaired. We will lose the ability to have our attendants take care of us. In response to those protesting, a spokesperson says, quote, Senator Gardner wants the constituents that were in his office today to have quality health care. He has concerns that our current system is imploding and won't be able to provide quality care if nothing is done to fix it. Now, police did show up here at around 6 o'clock tonight when this building closed, but no one was removed from the office. Uh, they've been allowed to remain here through the night as far as tomorrow goes. What will happen in the morning is unclear. We're live in Denver. Karen Morfitt, CBS 4 News. Thank you, Karen. Governor John Hickenlooper is in Washington right now to fight against the health care plan. Political specialist Sean Boyd will tell us about his efforts to talk with Senator Gardner a little bit later in our newscast. Hot, dry, and windy. No surprise, we saw this in Colorado today. A grass fire burned a few hundred acres in northeastern Adams County. Meteorologist Chris Beers in our mobile weather lab live right now in Fort Morgan. Boy, Chris, that one took off in a hurry this afternoon. It sure did, and that fire today caused by a dry thunderstorm and we believe a lightning strike. I want to show you some video that photojournalist and drone pilot Rob McClure shot. Take a look here. This fire burned an estimated amount of 500 acres in far eastern Adams County. It spread to the north and did cross into Morgan County. Ten different agencies had to help fight the flames, and luckily only an old abandoned farmstead was in jeopardy, and we're happy to report that it did not burn, but those flames came close. Back out here live, I've got the free CBS4 weather app pulled up. This is available for Apple and Android devices. We've got the radar on here. There's a few showers up near Rocky Mountain National Park, but you probably noticed the big red blob that is more fire weather warnings. They'll be in effect for tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned. Ed Green will have your full forecast. And Jim and Karen, you remember that roller coaster ride we took last week with temperatures? We've got another one in store. Chris, thanks so much. Tragedy on the Poudre River west of Fort Collins today when a commercial raft with seven people aboard flipped over. A 64-year-old man from Severance was unresponsive when pulled from the water. The others made it safely to shore. Criminal charges are possible after an eight-year-old boy brought a gun to school. The boy was at MSA Elementary School for camp yesterday. He was showing the gun to other kids in the bathroom when a child reported it to the staff. They took that gun away, quickly called police. Denver police are investigating possible charges. And thieves used a stolen Jeep to break into a gun store in Castle Rock, and they came ready with straps and tools to pull the bars right off the doors and windows. They got away with handguns and semi-automatic rifles. The ATF is looking into whether this burglary is related to similar smash and grabs in Littleton, Lakewood, and Colorado Springs. The traffic problems along I-70 in our high country do get a lot of attention, but the next big construction 
Construction Project is right in Denver, and it will last for four long years. CDOT crews will be widening and partially burying some of the interstate at a cost of $1.2 billion. There's the finished product. The 10-mile stretch runs roughly from Brighton Boulevard east to Chambers. The expansion will add an express lane in each direction. If we didn't do anything today, we'd be looking at probably a 60 minute commute from uh, I-25 to Tower Road in the future in, in 2035. With these improvements today, we'll be getting that in half. Construction is due to start next year. The I-70 work will be a major hassle for drivers, of course, but no one will feel the impact more than those living near the highway. Their neighborhoods already deal with pollution and noise. The construction project, though, does include upgrade to homes in the area. Our Jeff Todd at the elementary school tonight in Denver, Swansea neighborhood. Jeff, that money will pay for all sorts of things. Jim, this playground is going to be moved away from the interstate. We can already see new windows being installed. There's also going to be new doors and a new HVAC system here at the elementary school. The hope is that improvements here and to nearby homes will keep residents safe because the impacts from this project are going to be monumental. The construction process is one of the bigger concerns and, and, and the the air pollution, the noise, the dust, and so there's things we can do to make that easier. Toward the end of the summer, CDOT is planning to go door to door, checking with residents close to the interstate project to see if they want improvements. The air conditioning units, um, the interior storm windows, those are all measures so that it's not as noisy and dusty out here for the residents. They'll also offer weatherization and even attic insulation to residents who want it. They're welcome to do mine. I'll take anything. There's still a vocal opposition to the project as a whole. And even this part, one resident told us CDOT isn't doing enough to keep homes clean. Others told us they'd like to take CDOT up on the offer, but are still a little skeptical. Does it sound too good to be true? Uh, to me it does because you never get anything for free in life. There's going to be a lot of noise around here when they start doing all that stuff. Dirt, trucks, and everything come coming around here. There's money for a few other things that transportation departments don't normally fund. There's about $100,000 to try and bring in a grocery store to this area and also affordable housing units. We're live in the Swansea neighborhood. Jeff Todd, CBS4 News. Thank you, Jeff. We'll get ready for doing things a little differently on a couple of Denver's busiest streets. They're turning a couple of one-way streets into two-way streets. Denver Public Works wants to convert 19th and 20th Avenues between Broadway and Park Avenue West and Grant and Logan between 18th and 20th. They'll also put in some bike lanes. Public Works say the changes are necessary to keep up with all the changes with residential and commercial development. Rescue crews in Russia calling off the search for a missing police officer from Colorado. Stephen Bear disappeared while hiking on Mount Elbrus. It's one of the world's highest peaks. He's a police officer in Littleton and is an experienced climber. Bear has been missing since June 16th. His wife says she is not about to give up hope. She will continue praying for his safe return. In Colorado Springs, jury selection now went away in the corruption trial of former El Paso County Sheriff Terry Makita. He is accused of abusing his power by, among other things, threatening to cancel a big department contract because of a personal feud and trying to punish several deputies who crossed him. Attorney once again has to have that trial move, but it is staying put for now. Seems a lot of 4th of July fireworks are already going off in neighborhoods around Colorado. You might have heard them in yours. We're talking about illegal fireworks, which are way too easy to find. CBS4 investigator Rick Salinger shows us what happened after he found a seller on Craigslist. He's like an FBI agent. No, I'm not an FBI agent. <laughs> One of the people in the car recognized me as a newsman, but the transaction continued anyway. How much is it? A hundred bucks with this. Is this legal? You're, you're shaking your head no. Why is that? I'm not. No? <laughs> anyway, got the money. What we did is similar to what Denver police are doing. All right, Sarge gave the bus signal. We're good to come on in. Finding illegal sales and making busts. Here up to $5,000 worth of fireworks were confiscated. The danger is, is, say it explodes in the tube, it blows up the whole works and blows all your fingers off. We even found people using Facebook to sell fireworks. But with this one, the seller wrongly suspected we were police officers when we tried to set up an arrangement. Not this 
this time, though, they only seem to get suspicious here when our camera appears. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'd like to uh, ask you if you know what the law is uh, regarding the sale of fireworks like this.